Welcome to the homework for lesson 11. This is module 7 of third grade. Please write your name first so you can get credit for your homework. Samson tessellates regular hexagons to make the shape below. Outline the perimeter of Samson's new shape with a highlighter. So I'm going to use a yellow highlighter. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape. You shade in the area inside, but you trace around the outside of the perimeter or outline it. Okay, that's A. Now explain how Samson could use a string to measure the perimeter of his new shape. Well, what would you do if you had a string? Uh, I would... Oh, no, not I. Samson could... He could lay the string down along the perimeter mark he's gonna have to mark string where it meets the beginning of the loop then straighten the string and measure it with a ruler. All right, how many sides does his new shape have? So this is his unit. We're going to count all the sides. And one of the things that might make it easier for you to count is to recognize that each hexagon has three sides exposed to the outside of to to the perimeter. So that's Three, 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 three. Right? So that's six threes, which is 18. And says so shade in the area of his new shape with a colored pencil. So I'm going to use a purple marker for this. So just like I said before, we shade the area, that's the inside. The area is the space inside, the perimeter is the distance around the outside. There's a memory key that might help you. I haven't, I've never really seen a very good one, but you might try this. Think of the word perimeter, because perimeter and area get confused a lot in the beginning. Perimeter has the word meter in it, so just think of that meter as a, as a unit of length, not a measurement of area. So if you can keep that straight, then seeing that word meter might help you remember 
that you're when you're talking about perimeter, you're measuring distance and not and not not uh, square units. Now estimate to draw at least four copies of the given triangle to make a new shape without gaps or overlaps. Outline the perimeter of your new shape with a highlighter and shade in the area with a colored pencil. So we need four copies of this triangle. So the same thing up here. He used hexagons to make a new shape and we're going to use triangles. So let's see. And we're just going to kind of guess. Here's one. We're trying to make the same triangle again and again. So that's our estimation is that we, it's not going to be perfect. All right, so that's one and then another one. These are equilateral triangles. So you can think about this like the little, like the green triangles with the pattern blocks. If you have six of those, you can make a hexagon, right? But this one, we're just going to make a new shape without gaps or overlaps. So this one could go maybe to here. That's two more and I need four of these. I'm going to end up making sort of a hexagon with a bite taken out of it. Right. Maybe there. Okay, so uh, that's not that that shape is not going to tessellate very well, but uh, it doesn't say that it has to here. So I'm going to high outline the perimeter with a highlighter. And there's a lot of different shapes that you can make that would it doesn't have to look just like mine. It really doesn't. So there's a lot of ways that you could put these triangles together. All right, and now we're shading in the area. And that's and there's another memory key that might help. It might help you to think about this. Shade and area. If you think about those A's, that might help too. It's not a great memory key, really, but it might help. The marks on the strings below show the perimeters of Shyla's and Frank's shapes. Whose shape has a greater perimeter? How do you know? Well, it looks like if they're both starting from the same, the same endpoint, Frank's goes longer from the same endpoint. So we have to figure out a way to say this. First of all, we can see Frank's string is longer. If we're starting going left to right, which we can, we should just assume. Uh, and this should remind you of a tape diagram. How do you know his string is marked farther out? And Shyla's with the same endpoints. How about the same starting endpoints? You might have a better way to say it than I do, or a different way to say the same thing. India and Theo use the same shape to create the tessellations shown below. 
estimate to draw the shape India and Theo used to make their tessellations. So we just need to see, we just have to figure out what is the unit they use, because the, the whole thing about tessellation is that, think of it like a tile, you're going to use it over and over again. And so what is the unit that you're repeating over and over again? Some cases it, it can be deceiving, but in this one is pretty easy to see that this is the unit here, just one of those. And what Theo has done is he's just rotated his. Because if you take if you take India's and you rotate it that way, then you'll see that this corner here will just be down. It's the same unit. He's just changed the uh, the orientation of it. And if you move your paper around, you'll see that they look the same, just like an array does when you when you flip it when you flip it around like that. Uh, so here's the shape. It's a square. And I'll use Theo's example here. And one of these in the, with this one shaded. That's the unit. Theo says both tessellations have the same perimeter. Do you think Theo is right? Why or why not? Well, these are rectangles, aren't they? So this, the perimeter we have, this one is 2 by 3 length units, and this one is 3 by 2. So, I mean, it's really, it's the same, I could just say, like an array. Theo is right. Don't forget to mention that, because that's the question. And why or why not is... They are like... Arrays. making the same two by three rectangle. 